Hello and welcome to my channel Rapid Vectors. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to create collectibles and then update the award counter in the top left hand side of the screen. As you run into the coins you'll see a value appear above the coins, the coin will disappear and the tally will increase. If you like what you see in this tutorial please remember to hit like or subscribe or maybe view my playlist where there are other tutorials on how to make a 2D platformer game. To begin creating our first collectible, let's go to the root folder and create a new folder and we'll call this collectibles. And inside that folder, create a new folder and call this blue coin. We'll just go inside there again and then go scene, new scene and new 2D scene. We'll just rename this to be blue coin. Now let's add another child node and choose an animated sprite 2D. And let's add some sprite frames. For our coins and gems, I'm going to use this asset back here. So I'll leave the link in the description below. So just download that and unzip that file. Once you download and unzip the asset pack, when you open the image, all of the assets are in one large sprite sheet. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut out just this section of the sprite sheet for this tutorial. So as you can see, I have now cut out just the coins, gems and diamonds, which I would like to use in this tutorial. So I'm just going to drag that in and add that to the game. Now I've added the PNG to the collectibles folder so that I can use the sprite sheet for many of the different collectibles. So back to the sprite frames of the animated sprite 2D, what we can now do is on the default, we'll then add our frames. I'll just choose the coins and gems from the collectibles folder and I'll just zoom in and I'll choose 20 for the horizontal and I'll just pick this blue coin here. I'll add those six frames and we'll just leave it on that default. So I'll just say auto play for the animation and let's just zoom in on the coin and let's play that. And just increase the frames per second. So 10's okay for that. And then let's save our scene into the blue coin folder. Now for the blue coin, let's add another child node and call this area 2D. Add another child node to that and we'll use collision shape. And then for the shape option, let's choose circle shape. Let's just shrink this down a little bit more and then we'll just change the debug color. Let's also add another child node and choose label. And then choose horizontal alignment to be center and then just put a number one in the text field. Let's just scroll down and then let's reposition this node so that it's centered. So just center that on top of the coin. And what we're going to do with this coin is when the player comes into contact, the coin will disappear and the value that is being assigned to the player will then move. So we'll use a tween animation for this. So let's go back to our area 2D for the detection for the player and just scroll back down and let's just have a look at our collision layers. So at the moment we've got ground, player, enemy and pick up. So we want to add another layer to this and we'll call this collectibles. Once you've then added that, just close the window and then we can then set the layer. So we'll just set layer five and then for our mask, we want to mask and detect the player. Now just before we begin writing our scripts for the coin, just click on label again and we did position this to the center using this position option here. However, there is an anchors preset. So if you click top left, you can see it resets it back to here. And then if you choose center, it will automatically center it to this green anchor in the middle and it will automatically update the position here. So I'm just going to leave that where it's auto set. Now in the script, we'll create a tween so that when the coin's picked up, this value will move from this position and will stop somewhere above it and then we'll be queue freed. So I'll click on blue coin and then attach a script. We'll create the script in the folder and then let's begin by exporting our award amount. So say at export or award amount and we'll set this to a default value of one. So what we can then do is when we put the coins onto the screen, we can individually set some amounts on them if we want to. Then with the animated sprite 2D and label, let's bring that into our script. So hold down control and then just drag that over. So we should have an on Reddit animated sprite 2D 
and then the on ready label so we can access those let's create the ready function and then what we want to do is by default is hide the label now let's create the function for our area and we can do this by just clicking area go to the node and then let's choose body entered so on body enter click connect and then choose the blue coin to attach it to that script so now that we have our area 2d body entered method let's now do a check so we say if body is in group player then what we can do is we can print the award amount then we will hide the animated sprite and then let's set the label text so say label.text and set that to our award amount then we will show the label and then the next thing to do is to create our tween so what we want to is say bar tween and then you say get tree dot create tween then we say tween dot tween property pass in the label and then the property we want to access is the position and then pass in a ve vector to label dot position dot x and then it's label position dot y and then what we want to say is plus minus 10 so that it moves from the current label position by minus 10 up the y axis and then say 0 0.5 which is the duration of the movement and then we say from the current position so the label we're accessing the position property and then we're going to create a new vector 2 which is the labels position and then adjustment on the y axis and we're going to do it from the current position that it's at then we say tween dot tween callback and then pass in q3 so when the tween has finished it will then call q3 for us which will then remove the coin from the game now let's open our test level let's go to the scene let's create a new node that will act as a folder so we'll just put a base node in and we'll just call that collectibles i'm just going to then sit that just above the pickups and then in the blue coin folder let's add a new blue coin to the scene so we'll just zoom in on there and then i'll just pop that into the collectibles folder so that it is more organized and then let's run the game as we jump and then as we walk into the coin we should see the number one and move and there we go our next step is to create a collectible manager which we'll use in the auto load so that when we give a pickup award we can then call that back to the game screen and update the award counter this is very similar to the health manager which we created for our health bar so let's go to the scripts folder just right click and say new script and this script we'll call it collectible manager and then close that let's open that scene and then what we want to do is to first just add this to our auto load so go project project settings auto load and then just load that script so we'll sell scripts collectible manager and just open it and then just add our first variable will be a static variable which will keep the total amount of awards that we've been given so total award amount and we'll make that an integer and let's create a function as well called give pickup award and we're going to pass in the collectible award once we've hit a collectible we'll pass that value in and that will also be an integer as well then we can say the total award amount is plus and equals to whatever the collectible award is and this will start to then tally up each award that we, we get now what we need to do after this is once we've received an award we need to call that back to a user interface and update a label on the user interface which shows a tally of the total collected awards so we'll use a signal type signal and call this on collectible award received then copy and paste that into your method and then we'll emit it and the value we want to emit is the total award amount now go to the ui folder and open up the game screen as you can see we've still got the health bar screen on there and we'll create an icon here of the, a coin and we'll do a label here to assign the award amount but on the game screen let's add another child node and search for margin container in these anchor boxes at the top for this one we want to choose the full rectangle so once we set that it will then resize to the full game screen 
And in margin container, let's scroll down and let's turn on all of our margins. We can then choose 10 as the option for all of the items. And then let's add another child node and search for control. Now move the health bar into our control and just zoom in. Add another child node to margin container and choose a V box, which is the vertical box and move control into our V box here. We want another child node, which is H box, and that will align the controls horizontally. Let's add another child node to that. And we'll say control and then another child node and we'll say sprite. And what we want to do is we need to assign a texture to our sprite. So go back to the collectibles folder and assign that coins and gems. Then in our vertical frames, let's say four. And in the horizontal frames, it's 20 in this case. So that I only end up with one coin in the sprite. Let's add another child node and we'll just search for label. And let's just type zero into here for now. And I'll just move the label to be in the child as the HBox container so that we've got control and label together. As you can see, when you click control, the space is just a line on here. So what we need to do is to set the minimum size. So if we start to just increase that and with the sprite, we turn centered off, go back to the control and increase that minimum size so that it just fits the sprite in. And then let's just go to the control of our health bar and we need to do the same. So the custom minimum for the Y needs to be increased. As we start to increase it, we're just encapsulating our sprite in there as we've done. So we're just making sure that the spacing is correct. And this is because the Sprite 2D hasn't got the min and max value. So just pop that into a control component and then wrap the size around the Sprite. Now in the label, let's just scroll down. And in the container sizing, we just want to say shrink begin and then on the vertical shrink begin again so it's just going to position it to the top left and keep scrolling down and in the font size turn that on and set that to 12. Then go back to the scripts and in game in collectible manager we just want to then make an instance to this. Now when we get an award we want to update this value here so go to blue coin go back to blue coin script and under the label.txt, say collectible manager dot give pickup award and pass in that award amount. Now, before we test the game, I'd just like to mention something on the game screen. As you can see, we've used sprites inside of the controls. Now, there is an alternative control which can use to display images. So if you just go a child node and search for texture rect, you can use this component to put the image in. And this will honor the sizing without having to wrap it in a control. However, I'd just like to show how it's possible to still use things like Sprite 2D and the animated components if you really want to. And there is still one last thing just before we test is that we just need to create a script for the game screen. So we'll just create a game screen script, save that in the UI folder, and then rename this label the collectible label and drag this onto the script. Then create a ready function and get hold of the collectible manager and then connect the signal. When the signal is connected, we'll just create another function, which is the callback method. We'll pass in the total award and then we want to get the collectible label and then pass in the total award. But because the total award is an integer and the text needs a string, then pop the total award variable inside the string function. Now let's test the game. And as we run into the coin, we can see that the counter has now increased with that award value. We'll just stop that. So I'm now going to do the same thing for a green diamond and the pink gem. So now I've created the green diamond and the pink gem, except I've given them different award amounts. So let's just test that. And as you run into the first coin, we get a one. Then for the gem, a three. 
and for the diamond a five and that's where the counter is now reflecting that total award amount. Now back in my level one I've added four coins and a diamond so I'll just show you that and as you run into them then you can start creating lots of collectibles for your game. Now that brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you like what you see please remember to hit like or subscribe and there are other tutorials in this playlist on how to make a 2D platformer game such as creating the health bar, the enemies and other various components for your game. Thank you for watching.